as the A350 dominates the wide body segment and the A320 and A321 lead the narrow body market, Airbus has once again shocked the aviation industry by expanding its dominance with the launch of the A220 Stretch, a longer version of the A220. This new design targets to beat Boeing 737 MAX 8, where Airbus wants to block Boeing's way back in once and for all. Why is this variant poised to become the next dominant force in the industry? How will this stretch version defeat Boeing 737 MAX 8? Let's find out. In 2023, Airbus and its top executives publicly acknowledged what industry insiders had quietly suspected for years. They were actively exploring the idea of stretching the A220-300, potentially launching a new variant, the A220-500, A221, or whatever name they might ultimately choose for the longer aircraft. But then, the rumors suddenly faded. The reason is that Airbus had shifted its focus to a more urgent priority, ensuring its strained supply chain could keep up with the ramp-up in production across all its aircraft programs. Interestingly, the idea of a longer C-Series, the forerunner of today's A220 stretch, was already being discussed, while Bombardier and the Quebec government were still leading the program. In fact, the concept of a stretched A220 had been simmering since early 2019, even before the pandemic, when Airbus took majority control of what was then Bombardier's C-Series program. Bombardier, driven by a bold vision to create a revolutionary aircraft, had taken on heavy debt to bring the C-Series to market. But in the end, that very ambition forced the Canadian manufacturer to sell its initial stake to Airbus and eventually exit the program altogether. But you know what's even more striking? Back in 2017, Boeing filed a complaint with the U.S. International Trade Commission accusing Bombardier of dumping its C-Series jets to win a major Delta order. Yet beyond the price dispute, Boeing feared something much bigger. That the rumored CS500, now known as the A220-500, wouldn't just threaten the 737 MAX 7, but could also become a direct rival to the 737-800 and 737 MAX 8. And perhaps Boeing was right all along. So what is it about this aircraft that has Boeing genuinely afraid? Thanks for sticking around until here. Please show your support by hitting like, share, and don't forget to subscribe to get notified about our super interesting videos. Thanks a lot. Since entering commercial service in 2016, the Airbus A220 has quietly, yet powerfully, reshaped the very foundation of modern aviation. It may be small in size, but it packs a punch. In an industry long dominated by bulky wide bodies and legacy narrow bodies, this aircraft has proven that true disruption doesn't need to come in a giant frame. Airlines were quick to recognize its value, smoother than expected performance, astonishing fuel efficiency, and a cabin experience that instantly won over passengers and crews alike. This isn't just another aircraft, it's a bold statement about where the future is heading. Then, the COVID-19 pandemic brought global aviation to a near standstill. Massive fleets were grounded, runways filled with idle jets. But while almost every other aircraft was grounded, this aircraft kept flying. With its lightweight structure, ideal capacity, and unrivaled efficiency, it immediately became the star of short-haul routes, just when airlines were desperately seeking cost-saving lifelines. And while airports had turned into graveyards for wide-body aircraft, the A220 immediately proved its worth. But not content with that, with a new stretch version, Airbus has its eyes on something even bigger. So what is its plan? It looks promising. Airbus wants to stretch this agile, high-performing aircraft into a new force to be reckoned with, the A220-500. But this isn't just about squeezing in more seats, though it will, with a potential capacity of 160 to 170 passengers, putting it head-to-head -head with the Boeing 737 MAX 8 and Airbus's own A320neo. This design will have structural enhancements, additional overwing exits, and most importantly, unwavering safety. It will be a larger, bolder aircraft and engineered to lead. What's stirring even more buzz is what's happening under the wings. The current A220 is powered by Pratt & Whitney's PW1500G, part of the geared turbofan GTF family, seen as more reliable than the troubled PW1100G used on other Airbus models. 
but concerns exist about the PW1500G's long maintenance cycles and long-term durability. Meanwhile, GE Aerospace, through its joint venture CFM International with Safran, is watching closely. CEO Larry Culp has hinted that GE may step into the competition, competing to power the A2-2500. If that happens, the engine war could heat up dramatically, shifting the balance of power in a key market segment. Moreover, details on the stretched variance range remain limited, but analysts are painting an intriguing picture. With lighter, more powerful engines and possibly additional fuel tanks, center or auxiliary, the A2-2500 could reach up to 4,000 nautical miles. That's farther than the 737 MAX 8. If Airbus pulls it off, the aircraft wouldn't just sell well, it could explode in popularity and become a true global phenomenon. But what makes it truly fascinating is Airbus's holistic approach. A lighter airframe, improved fuel economy despite the larger size, and a cabin layout carefully designed for the practical demands of today's airline operations. This isn't merely a stretched variant, it's the next chapter. A strategic weapon in Airbus's campaign for market dominance. So, when can we expect to see this new aircraft? With the A2-2500 on the horizon, expected to enter service sometime after 2030, Airbus is quietly laying the groundwork for what could become its next commercial blockbuster. This stretched version of the already successful A220 is generating serious anticipation, and with good reason. It promises to attract a whole new wave of customers, airlines that want greater seating capacity while preserving the efficiency and flexibility that made the original A220 such a standout performer. To date, the A220 program has racked up a total of 898 orders, the majority of which are for the larger A220-300. That overwhelming preference reveals something critical. Airlines are increasingly leaning toward aircraft with greater capacity. It's this trend that has fueled growing confidence that when the stretch version finally takes to the skies, it won't just follow in its predecessor's footsteps, it might even surpass them. A larger variant simply makes sense, and there are many airlines that have waited for this stretch for a long time. One of the most vocal advocates is Breeze Airways, a fast-growing U.S. low-cost carrier known for targeting underserved routes with precision. Breeze has repeatedly hinted that a stretched aircraft would fit perfectly into its unique operational model and why the A320neo, despite its popularity, just doesn't meet their specific needs. David Neeleman, the visionary founder behind both JetBlue and Breeze, even took to LinkedIn to speak openly about his airline's fleet strategy. While he acknowledged the critical role that Embraer jets played in his earlier ventures, he made one thing very clear. Times have changed. For him, the A220 is now the ideal aircraft, not just for its fuel efficiency and passenger comfort, but because it can fly farther. This is, in his words, a truly transcontinental aircraft, something the Embraer E2 simply can't match. And that really matters. Range means opportunity. With the stretched version, Breeze could open up longer routes while maintaining a single, streamlined fleet. A major advantage in an industry where operational complexity can quickly erode profits. Neelman also emphasized that Airbus's newer technology, combined with the aircraft's expanded seating capacity, gives the A220-500 a clear edge as a long-term fleet foundation. Breeze isn't just interested, they're waiting. But there isn't only Breeze. Air Canada is also expected to place an order for the 500, viewing it as the perfect successor to its aging A320 CEO fleet. With eight MAX aircraft already delivered to Rouge, there's a noticeable gap in Air Canada's narrow-body strategy. The A22500 fits neatly into that space, offering more seats, modern tech, and the range to get the job done. And then there's Air Baltic, arguably the most A220-dependent airline in the world. With an all-A220 fleet and ambitious plans to expand throughout Europe and beyond, Air Baltic is a strong contender to become the launch customer for this version. For them, this isn't just a nice-to-have, it's a natural evolution. A larger A220 would allow them to enter higher demand routes without disrupting their standardized fleet model. And in modern aviation, operational consistency has an important role. Across the board, airlines that value efficiency, range, and fleet simplicity are paying attention. The stretched A220 is no longer just a concept on paper, it's shaping up to be a strategic solution to real-world challenges. And as the market shifts toward right-sized aircraft with longer legs and leaner economics, Airbus may once again find itself rewriting the rules, one stretch at a time. 
However, as Airbus prepares to stretch the A220 into a new class of performance and capacity, is the A220-500 about to cannibalize the lower cost segment of the A320neo family? At first glance, it certainly seems possible. With an expected capacity of around 160 to 170 seats, the A220-500 sits just below the A320neo, which typically accommodates 180 to 186 passengers in a high-density single-class configuration. For low-cost carriers LCC, that's already close enough to warrant comparison. But beyond seating numbers, the A220 stretch brings something else to the table. Superior efficiency on short and medium haul routes. Its lighter composite-rich airframe and advanced aerodynamics translate into lower fuel burn per seat, particularly on routes that don't demand the full payload capability of an A320neo. For airlines operating on thinner, less saturated routes, this efficiency can make a huge difference in profit margins. That said, the A320neo still holds key advantages in certain areas. Its larger belly cargo space, mature global support ecosystem, and proven high-density performance make it the go-to aircraft for many high-traffic short-haul routes. On busier networks, especially where every seat counts and frequency is king, the A320neo is still a powerhouse. So where does the A2-2500 fit in? Right in the middle. For new or expanding LCCs that want lower trip costs, longer range, and greater operational flexibility without sacrificing too many seats, the A2-2500 could become the aircraft of choice. Breeze Airways is a prime example, favoring the A220's economics over the bulk of the A320neo especially on underserved or mid-range transcontinental routes. Airbus, of course, is aware of the potential overlap. But instead of avoiding it, they seem to be embracing it, strategically positioning the A220-500 as a complementary option rather than a direct replacement. By offering both, Airbus widens its net. Airlines can scale up or down within a familiar cockpit environment, maintenance framework, and support system. In short, while the A220-500 may chip away at the lower end of the A320neo's territory, especially among value-focused operators, it won't replace it entirely. What it will do is push Airbus's dominance deeper into Boeing's stronghold, giving airlines an option that was previously missing, a right-sized, long-range narrowbody optimized for today's leaner, smarter airline business models. Could this be the aircraft that threatens Boeing? What do you think? Let us know your thoughts, and be sure to subscribe for more of our deep-dive aviation analysis. Thanks for watching, and stay safe.